Hey everyone, Xeon over here from Nintendo Life, and today we're here to share with you our review of Golden Sun on the Game Boy Advance. Now you might be thinking to yourself, Game Boy Advance? What year is it? Well, it just so happens that both Golden Sun and the sequel, Golden Sun The Lost Age, are now playable on Switch through the Nintendo Switch Online app. And being the big Golden Sun fans that we are, we thought it'd be nice to try and shine a light on these games and help justify why they came to Nintendo Switch Online and why they're still worth playing today. Now as a quick history lesson, a lot like Mother 3, Golden Sun was originally being developed for the Nintendo 64, and then at some point they shifted development to the Game Boy Advance. They also split the game in half and released it as two separate parts. In 2001, we were given Golden Sun, and then a year later in 2002, we were given Golden Sun The Lost Age. And since The Lost Age is literally a direct continuation of Golden Sun, and it's just more of that same kind of game, we won't be covering it here, as we'd likely spoil a lot of the story for you, and that's half the fun. So without further ado, let's get onto the review, which was kindly written by Robert Hughes for NintendoLife.com, and was reworked into this video by me. Golden Sun is a game that expands on proven traditions of the RPG genre to deliver an experience that both pays tribute to and refines the formula. It's a franchise that has a loyal following, and rightly so, and whether it'll ever return with a new title has been a hot topic for those fans for many years now. And the third and latest entry in the Camelot developed series was released all the way back in 2010 on the Nintendo DS with Golden Sun Dark Dawn. And after seemingly lackluster sales and only decent reviews when compared to the original two games, the future hasn't looked as bright. But now, 23 years later, the original game and its sequel have been re-released on Switch through the Game Boy Advance Nintendo Switch Online app. And thankfully, they play just as well as we remember. Golden Sun opens up with the protagonist, Isaac, waking up to the sound of a terrible storm threatening to destroy his hometown of Vale, the residents of which are able to harness powerful synergy. Synergy? Ah, it's a supernatural force that manifests in a variety of ways, like making plants grow, turning water into ice, and using telekinesis. And you'll witness this at the very beginning as the village tries to stave off a giant boulder that's barreling down into the town. Now without spoiling too much of the plot, Golden Sun takes a leisurely attitude to establishing an overarching narrative, instead prioritizing character introduction and explanation of the game's rich setting. It's a gamble that ultimately pays off, allowing it to craft interesting and relatable characters, but those easily frustrated with such a slow start may find themselves turned off before even leaving the village, which is where the game truly begins. It can be hard to keep tabs on what's going on at times, an issue largely caused by its tendency to talk a little excessively and drown out important information with extraneous chatter. But the dialogue does make for a more endearing experience on the whole. The game also loves to make the player feel included in the many exchanges, constantly throwing simple yes or no questions into the mix. But these never really feel important to the plot and rarely fit naturally with the dialogue itself, instead feeling more akin to artificial interactivity. The gameplay is somewhat standard RPG fare for the most part. The protagonist and his eventual cohorts traverse the world exploring varied landscapes, unearthing ancient dungeons and pilfering any objects in random houses that aren't nailed to the ground. Battles are commenced entirely at random on the world map and follow a standard turn-based regimen, enriched with an impressive variety of attacks and abilities at the party's disposal. Overworld exploration is made more interesting though by the use of the character's synergy. Isaac's telekinetic powers, for example, can be used to shift certain objects in the environment to solve puzzles, giving Golden Sun a Legend of Zelda meets Final Fantasy setup. It's fairly unique and entertaining, although a little fiddly. You often have to stand in a very specific spot and face a specific direction to have the short range abilities activate correctly, otherwise they fizzle out and Isaac is left with nothing but fewer magic points for his trouble. Harnessing these abilities properly comes with practice, but it's frustrating in the early hours to drain your character's energy trying to shift a statue that is inches away from your character. Thankfully, the Switch version allows the player the chance to rewind the game if you make mistakes like this, and it's perfectly fine and acceptable if you do. 
because you probably will. An interesting wrinkle to the otherwise fairly conventional combat system is the inclusion of elemental djinn, small creatures that aid the heroes in battle by bolstering their stats. Equipping one to a character greatly increases their offensive and defensive parameters, but also allows for the use of a powerful attack, healing spell, or the like depending on the individual djinn. The caveat though is that once this attack is used, the djinn temporarily enters a standby mode where it no longer boosts your character's stats. Hence, a risk-reward strategy comes into play when using these monsters. Is it better to continue with higher stats and play it safe using standard attacks and magical attacks, or to unleash the Ginny's powers early on in an all-out attack? It's a simple mechanism with surprisingly deep results, although it's not explained particularly well from the get-go. Again, this is another aspect that is better understood through practice than explanation. Graphically, Golden Sun was a marvel on its native system. Environments are detailed, particularly building interiors that are decorated with a real sense of detail and believability, whilst overworld characters are well designed, if somewhat bland. It's in combat though that Golden Sun is a true visual masterpiece though, and Camelot's ability to create the effects seen in Golden Sun within the GBA's limitations is laudable. The dynamic camera swoops all around during battle, despite being composed of 2D sprites. There's some clever trickery taking place here, while magic attacks explode with a flourish of impressive particle effects. Golden Sun has aged incredibly well, owing in part to its intentionally classic retro aesthetic and ports fairly well to the big screen. As for the audio side of things, the soundtrack is fine and well suited to the environments, but lacking in many earworms that you'll be humming years down the line. Thankfully, the battle theme is one of the more enjoyable tracks, which is always important when it's the song you'll hear on repeat. It's brimming with the energy and up-tempo melody that matches even some of Final Fantasy's finest. There's nothing huge to complain about with the rest of the soundtrack, really, beyond just being fairly unmemorable, but its inoffensive and competent tunes accompany the adventure well enough. The sound effects, though, are more than fine. The satisfying clunks and slashes during battles give weight to the combat, and nailing an enemy with a powerful strike feels all the more satisfying because of it. Golden Sun is a fine RPG, perfecting the classic formula while introducing unique mechanics of its own. The setting is interesting, the characters are likable, and the story is gripping. The first few hours are a slog, sure, but role-playing adventures were never designed for the impatient. At least they didn't used to be. Stick with this one through the opening issues and you'll be rewarded with a rich, deep RPG that desperately awaits and deserves a modern day installment. We here at Nintendo Life give Golden Sun on the Nintendo Game Boy Advance an 8 out of 10. Hey, if you're still there, I'd love to give you my own personal second opinion of Golden Sun on the GBA. So I grew up with Golden Sun back in the day. It was the first Game Boy Advance game I ever bought. I remember buying this with a fuchsia pink GBA at FYE, which was for your entertainment. This was 23 years ago, believe it or not. And this was one of the few RPGs that I actually beat as a kid alongside Lunar, Silver Star, Breath of Fire 2, and Final Fantasy 4 on GBA. As a kid, I found anything strategy-based to just soul-crushing. I just couldn't push through it. But there was something about Golden Sun. Maybe it was the fact that the game wasn't too difficult. Or maybe it was the graphics. The fact that this game looked like something that couldn't be possible on the GBA. There was something that kept me pushing. And while over the years I've picked up the game a few times, maybe put five hours into it and then put it back down for other things. And while I've always had fun with it during those moments, I've never really given it a good chunk of my life again until now. And I think part of that is because this has been one of those games that I've been really nervous to revisit. Golden Sun was such a big part of my childhood. I mean, I, I played it right at launch and it really shaped my interest as far as games that I would seek out in the future. So at the time of recording this video, I'm now about 16 or 17 hours into my new replay of Golden Sun. And aside from a few small gripes, I've had an absolute blast and I can't wait to go play Golden Sun The Lost Age. One of my biggest takeaways, and this is something I remember fondly from when I played as a kid, is how much fun it is to hunt down the different Ginny. These little characters are scattered all over the world. Sometimes you'll find them in the dungeon. Sometimes you'll find them in a random forest. And maybe a villager gave you a hint that they'd be there or something like that. 
And once you encounter them, they'll either just join your party once you talk to them, or you'll have to fight them. And it'd almost be like a rare Pokemon battle where if you don't beat them quick enough, they might run away. So it's important to save your game before you actually encounter one, just in case. Otherwise, you'll have to leave the room and go rediscover them or something like that. And it's just annoying. But as you unlock more of them and equip them to your characters, they can stack in battle and you can summon larger different creatures and monsters to fight for you in battle, kind of like a summon in the Final Fantasy series. And beyond just leveling up and unlocking new magic abilities and getting new equipment, this has always been a nice kind of reward for the player, I felt, as it pushes you to explore the environments more and solve the puzzles. And then in battle, you get treated with these, not cutscenes, but almost, that's almost how it felt back in the day, and, and they actually still are that impressive now. Another cool thing is that you can kind of mix and match your different genie between your different characters, and when you equip them, and based on what combinations you choose, your characters will actually have different abilities and even different synergy that they can use on the overworld. Now, I don't want to spoil what you get from those, but it's worth trying to mix around different genie with different characters whenever you play the game just to kind of see what abilities you might find. Now, one thing I had completely forgotten about is the fact that one of your characters early on in the game unlocks the ability to read the minds of other characters in the game. And you can actually use this on any NPC that you discover in the game from what I've found so far. And this ability really allows you to kind of see a more personal side of all of the characters in the game. And kind of in a way like Earthbound, it, it allows you to connect with those characters a bit more. And I think the translators of this game at the Nintendo Treehouse back in the day had a lot of fun translating this game because you get some really wild dialogue that comes out of this. And let's say you get to a village for the first time that is maybe devastated by something or there's a problem that the, the village is facing and you need to fix it. If you talk to everybody and use the mind read ability on your first visit there, you go fix things and come back, everybody will have brand new pieces of dialogue. They'll have new things to share with you. Now, I completely understand that the fact that both of these games coming to Nintendo Switch Online probably doesn't bode well for a, a HD 2D style remake of Golden Sun 1 and 2. But playing this game again has got me thinking and has made me realize that maybe, yeah, I, I, of course I would still love to see a full from the ground up remakes of first Golden Sun games. I would love to see another game in this universe that doesn't ride on the coattails of Isaac and his friends and of the characters that have come before. I think they could still use Ginny and the elemental effects and try to nail down the camera angles and the special effects that made the first two games in the series so special. The DS Dark Dawn game kind of lost that. I bought that game on launch and just wasn't really interested in it, unfortunately. But I'm excited to play through these games and actually then give that one a go and see it through to the end. And hopefully by then, we'll have a new Golden Sun game to talk about. That's just my hopes and dreams, of course. But hey, if we keep talking about it and we keep telling Nintendo that we want another Golden Sun game, maybe they'll hear us. But hey, thanks for sticking around for my second opinion, and thanks to Robert for spending so much time with Golden Sun back when he did as well. Be sure to let us know in the comments down below what you think of the Golden Sun series. I'd be curious to know how many of you played this one back in the day or are going to be playing it for the first time now. Oh, and of course, if you enjoyed this video and you want to see more videos like this, like a future video on an upcoming Golden Sun game, if that happens, because you know we're going to cover it, then why don't you find that subscribe button and summon it to the battlefield, and then ring that notification bell to be notified whenever we put up a new video. Thank you all so much for watching. I'm Zian from Nintendo Life. Stay safe out there, and we will see you all next time. Oh.